Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Today I'm going to be doing a full prom makeup tutorial from start to finish. I feel like it would go with any dress color, any eye color. And I'm also going to be talking about my favorite prom styles for this year. I remember going to prom in high school. I'm now um, a junior, almost a senior in college. So it's been a long time since I've been to prom. So I'm really missing it and missing getting ready for it. I just think it's an awesome time and it can be so magical. And I just wanted to go over some of the trends that I have seen um, just browsing around, it's specifically from Macy's. They always have really great deals on dresses and stuff. So wait until after the makeup tutorial and I will be talking about my favorite dresses that I've seen from Macy's. And also I'm going to be talking about the trends that you'll see when you're shopping for prom dresses. And I picked out some of my favorites. And of course, I couldn't do this video without showing you guys some of my old prom pictures. So I am going to be including some of those towards the end of the video and show you guys what I wore to prom and kind of what the styles were back then. So let's go ahead and get started with the makeup look. So I'm first starting off with a primer. I love using a primer before any special event because it really keeps your foundation on longer and it keeps it from settling into any fine lines. And it just fills in your pores and make it go on more evenly. It's also gonna mattify your face if you have oily skin. You can see the difference in one side of my face opposed to the other that doesn't have primer. You can see it's just really mattified and it looks very smooth. So to apply your foundation, you can use either a flat top kabuki brush or you can use a makeup sponge, whichever you prefer. But I'm going to be using the Revlon Colorstay Whipped Foundation. This one does not have an SPF, so you want to make sure you don't use anything that's going to reflect and flash photography since you're going to be taking pictures. And this is also full coverage and it's mattifying and it lasts a really long time. So I first started using the Beauty Blender to apply it, but then I realized that it didn't blend it out as well as I wanted to. So then I switched over to the Sigma F80 brush, which I love and I just think it's fantastic for applying foundation. You also want to make sure that you apply your foundation in thin layers and you can build up the coverage only where you need it. I have a whole video on how to avoid cakey makeup, so I will link that for you guys in the description box below if you want to check that out. But the secret to it is just applying it in very thin layers and only applying extra layers where you still need the coverage. Now for concealer, I'm going to be using the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I don't want to use anything that's too brightening or has any light reflective particles in it because that can really give you that white cast and flash photography. So you want to make sure you just use something that doesn't have any SPF, doesn't have any glitter or shimmer in it. This one is just matte and it has excellent coverage. It's very thin as well so it just blends out perfectly and it doesn't look cakey. And to set my under eye concealer, I'm using the NYX HD Translucent Powder and I just use this on a fluffy blending brush and I apply that all around my eyes. That's going to make sure your concealer doesn't crease and also so your eyeliner and mascara don't smudge. Now for my contour, I'm using the brown bronzer shade out of this Nuance Salma Hayek Flawless Mineral Cheek Trio. And I'm just using that bronzing shade to contour my cheekbones. This just is going to give your face more dimension and not look so flat, especially when you're taking pictures. It can really wash you out. So it's nice to use a bronzer just to warm up your face and also add some definition. So blending is key when it comes to contouring. You don't want any harsh lines and you also don't want to use a contouring shade that has any shimmer in it because you want to only apply the shimmer where you want your face to highlight. You don't want to apply it to your contour or anything. It's just going to show up bad in photography as well. So now I'm just setting my foundation. I actually forgot to do this before my contour. I'm using my NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. This does have some coverage in it because it is a powder foundation. And I'm just using that to set that foundation so it does not budge. And it also will keep any oil from forming throughout the night. Then I'm just also taking my bronzer shade down onto my neck. That's just to blend everything out. You can also use the contour shade to contour your collarbones. This is going to have like a slimming effect and it also looks really beautiful if you're wearing a strapless dress. It just really accentuates your collarbone and makes you look a lot slimmer. So now for blush, I'm first applying the Maybelline Master Glaze Blush in Pinch Pink using the e.l.f. Small Stipple Brush. and I'm just applying that to the tops of my cheekbones focusing it on the outer portion. And I have a whole video on how to apply cream blush if you're confused or have trouble with it. I will link that for you guys down below. But if you use the cream blush first and then you top it off with a powder, it's going to last longer than just using one or the other. And cream blush looks a lot more natural on your skin and it just gives you a nice blush. And then I'm just topping it off with the NYX blush in peach and this one pretty much matches the same color. I'm just applying a little bit just to set it or you could just use your face powder to set it. Now for a highlighter, I'm using this Snow Buddy shade out of my Too Faced Bronze and Beautiful palette. I'm just applying that with a Sedona Lace fan brush to the tops of my cheekbones and then on my temples and also down my nose and on my cupid's bow just to really make my face look radiant. 
And I'm also highlighting my collarbone again to make it stand out even more. So now onto eyebrows, which is probably the most important step to any makeup look. I'm just using the Nuance Natural Look Eyebrow Pencil. It's just so natural looking, like the name, and it also lasts a really long time and it's very thin and easy to apply. And to keep it really natural looking, you just want to use short little strokes to mimic natural brow hairs. You also want to avoid totally filling in your eyebrows. You just want to fill in the sparse areas that don't have much hair. And then you just run the spoolie over it to blend it out and make it look even more natural. And then I'm just using the e.l.f. Wet Gloss Lash and Brow Gel just to set them in place. And a brow gel is just going to ensure that the little hairs don't move out of their place throughout the night. So now I'm priming my eyelids for eyeshadow and this is just the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It's one of my favorites. It's going to keep your eyeshadow from creasing and it's also going to make it go on more vibrant. And then I'm just using the Maybelline Color Tattoo Eyeshadow. This one is in Barely Beige. It's just a shimmery beige color. They have some different names now for this. They've kind of come out with them with different collections, but they still have a shimmery beige one out. I just don't know the new name of it. But this is just going to bump up the eyeshadow that we're putting on over top. So I'm first starting out with my Lorac Pro Palette and I'm taking the shade Nude, which is a really light, shimmery, pinky tone eyeshadow and it's just gorgeous. It's like a shimmery champagne and it just makes your eyes really glisten. And I'm just applying that with a large flat shader brush all over my lid. And I'm also applying a little bit of that to my lower lash line on the inner corner. Now I'm just using my Urban Decay Naked 3 palette and I'm mixing the shade Buzz and Trick to create my own rose gold shade. And I'm just applying that using a smaller flat shader brush to the outer portion of my lid. Now I'm applying the matte mauve shade called Nooner using a larger fluffy blending brush. And I'm just putting that on the outer portion of my crease and then I'm going to drag it into the inner corner just using like small windshield wiper motions back and forth just to blend it out and make it look softer. Now back to my Lorac Pro palette, I'm using the shade Espresso, which is a dark chocolate matte brown. And I'm using this really long, small crease brush from Sedona Lace. And I'm just using that to apply it to the very outer corner of my crease. I'm also using my finger as a barrier to keep the shadow from falling down too low. This is better than using tape because it doesn't create such a harsh line. So I'm just focusing this dark brown shade on the outer portion of my eye and I'm not going to drag it too far in because I do have small eyes so I don't want to close them off. I want to keep them very big and wide awake looking. So now I'm applying the shade cream just using a fluffy blending brush to my brow bone. This is just going to pull the look together and just blend everything out. So now I'm using the CoverGirl Ink It Eyeliner Pencil in brown and I'm just going to use this to line my top lash line. I'm also going to just wing it out slightly but not too much. I'm just going to keep this very natural and subtle. I don't want a really super thick line. And I am going to take it all the way into my inner corners. Then I'm just applying it to my waterline and also smudging it between my lashes on my bottom lash line. And then I'm just taking a clean pencil brush and I'm softening the line just by smudging it out. I'm not pressing too hard, just enough to make it not such a harsh line and blend everything together. And you can also do this on the lower lash line as well. Then I'm just going back in and touching up that rose gold shade I did on the outer portion of my lid just because it gets taken away sometimes. And then I'm just using a clean blending brush to blend everything out. And now I'm just using a concealer brush with some of my concealer on it and I'm cleaning up the outer corner there. Sometimes it can get a little red or some shadow can fall down below there. So I just like to do this to sharpen it up. And then I'm just using my beauty blender to blend that out. And I'm also going back in with my powder to set it. So now I'm just taking my brown eyeliner pencil and smudging it between my lashes. So then I'm just using a really small flat shader brush and I'm applying some more of that brown eyeshadow to my lower lash line just to blend everything together. You can hold a tissue underneath to prevent fallout onto your cheeks. And then I'm just applying some of the rose gold eyeshadow I mix and focusing that on the middle portion of my lower lash line. So then for lashes, I'm just curling my eyelashes to really open up my eyes. And then I'm applying a very thin coat of my Revlon 3D Volume Mascara. And then I'm just going to be applying these Half Lashes by Ardell. I just put a little bit of lash glue on the strip. I wait for it to get a little bit tacky and then using tweezers I set it on the outside of my eye and then I just press it down. Using Half Lashes looks a lot more natural and you can't even tell that you're wearing any. And then I'm just applying a second thin coat of mascara to blend them together. This is really important so they look more natural. And then I'm just going over the lash band to conceal it with my CoverGirl liquid liner. And this is just going to help it blend out. You can go ahead and apply a thin line to your lashes if you want to, just to make it all look even. 
So now for lips, I'm starting off with my NYX Lip Liner in Natural and I'm just going to line my lips and slightly fill them in. Using a lip liner is going to ensure that it lasts all night and nothing's going to fade off. It just keeps it on a lot longer and it gives the lip gloss something to stick to. And then I just used my NYX Butter Gloss in Creme Brulee and I went over that. It's just a really nice nude color and it gives your lips a nice sheen. And that is it for the finished makeup tutorial. I love how it turned out. I feel like it's very soft and romantic and it would go with any dress that you choose to wear. So now onto my prom pictures. This was the first prom dress that I wore. I think it was back in 2008. And it was just a gorgeous princess style gown. It was a really light pink color. It had tons of beading and intricate detail on the front and then it was like a halter style. This was my first pick that I saw and I just fell in love with it because my style was so girly and feminine and I just loved that one. And then my second dress was a little bit different because it had that slimmer silhouette to it and it was a bright green color. It looks a little bit more lime green in pictures than it actually was in person, but I loved the back of this dress because it had a really pretty like cross shape to it on the back and then it had beading on the straps. It was just really pretty and it was a nice silky material. I feel like the styles of prom dresses back when I was in high school was more of like bright colors, deep plunging necklines like both of my dresses, and then just like either a slimmer silhouette or either really poofy. There wasn't a lot in between and they all had the same cut at the bottom. And now I feel like there's so many more different styles of dresses to choose from now and everything's a lot more trendy now. So one of the biggest trends that I have been seeing a lot of this year is the romantic and vintage, kind of girly looking prom dresses. It's full of lace and really soft blush tones, really pretty fabrics and lots of beading. It's just gorgeous and if this trend was popular when I was in high school, I would have been all over it because you guys know I love that type of look, kind of like my top I'm wearing here today. It's just a really light blush color, it's got some lace in it, it has a really nice like chiffon material. I just love that style and it's definitely my style so that was one of the biggest ones that really stood out to me. So some of the big colors that I saw a lot of were nude, pink, corals, I saw some aqua colors too that looked really popular, some aqua and mint. Um, those also weren't around when I was in school either. I rarely remember seeing any of those really bright aqua mint colors that you see a lot of now. So that's just gorgeous. So that would definitely be one of my top choices. It would be between the mint aqua color and then between like a blush color. I would probably end up going with the mint aqua color just because I feel like it looks better on my skin tone and my hair. But I love this blush color. I just think it's so feminine and beautiful. So I found a bunch of different dresses on Macy's that were the blush color as well as the mint and aqua color. So I picked out a few of them for you guys if you guys are kind of undecided on a dress or you're not sure what you should get. So I just want to quickly go over some of the trends too that I saw. I'm going to have a ton of more trends and stuff listed on my blog. So if you want to go over to there, it's going to be the first link in the description box below. That'll take you to the blog post that has kind of a write-up about the new trends for this year. And it will kind of simplify it so it's not just all over the place. So for the romantic and vintage glam trend... You're going to see a lot of lace, a lot of princess style gowns, so the more poofy ball gowns, and then there's also some really skinny silhouettes. Like I said, the colors are going to be soft nudes and pink. You're also going to see some beading and crystals um, woven into the dresses, just very sparkly, and then like that metallic gold and silver look is going to be showing up through there too. So so for your accessories, I would go with the metallic silver or gold, whichever goes better with the color of your dress to really emphasize that sophisticated vintage look. And I've also been seeing a lot of cutouts, whether if it's just like in the back, like an open back dress, or if it has like different cutouts around the shoulders, or around the waist. I personally would not feel comfortable in something that had a lot of cutouts around the waist just because I'm kind of modest. But there were some on the website that looked gorgeous that were still very um, modest where it didn't look like you were showing too much, but they had a little edge to them with the cutout. So it's just a small amount cut out in different places in the dress and mainly on the back too. So I thought that was gorgeous and it was really neat kind of play on regular trends you see for day-to-day -day fashion. And also I saw a lot of the high to low hemlines, which is something that was popular last spring for the skirts and the dresses but it's taken into prom dresses where it's higher in the front and longer in the back and it's really pretty and elegant too and it kind of shows off your legs as well. As far as necklines, I saw pretty much the same necklines that have always been around but I did see some that had a higher neckline which I thought was interesting. It kind of wrapped around the neckline with the lace all the way up the um, chest here. I thought that was gorgeous and a really neat addition to that feminine look. So if you want to see more trends, if you're not into the vintage glam look, then definitely head over to my blog. I'm going to discuss a few more of them on there just so this video doesn't get too long. But that one is definitely my favorite and the one that I would go with. So please leave me a comment down below. You can paste a link to your favorite dress that you found on Macy's website or on any website. 
Um, definitely leave it in the comments down below because I would love to see the one that you're going with. Or you could definitely describe your prom dress to me that you're going to be wearing because I would love to know what you guys are wearing. And if you decide to try this makeup look out, definitely tweet me a picture at Glam Me Up. You can tag me on Instagram, you could post a link in the comments, whatever you want to do. But I definitely want to see it if you guys decide to try it out. And as always, all the products that I use in the makeup tutorial are going to be linked on my blog if you're interested of where you can get them. I will also post some cheaper drugstore alternatives on there as well if you don't want to purchase the um, Lorac Pro or the Naked 3. I'm going to have some alternatives that are a little bit cheaper for you all who don't want to spend a lot. Look for more videos to come. I want to do another makeup tutorial showing more of like a black and gray smoky, like traditional smoky eye. Um, but this one I definitely want to go with more soft neutral. So look out for that and possibly a hair tutorial if you guys have any requests for prom hair tutorials definitely let me know there's so give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to check out my blog which is the first link in the description box below you can also follow me on twitter and instagram it's just at glam up if you want to keep up with me day to day and i post videos every wednesday and saturday so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on one and i'll talk to you soon mm -hmm.